Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to go over how to set up a video streaming service in AWS. We'll have a basic React app that consumes the video. We'll store the video in S3. And we're also gonna set up a CDN using CloudFront to sit in front of our bucket, which will improve the performance. If you're not familiar with AWS, that's okay. I'm gonna go over each service as we set it up. Let's get started. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create our S3 bucket. If you're not familiar with S3, it's basically just a file storage service that allows us to store different files in AWS. Let's give our bucket a name. We could call it Demo Video Streaming Service. Then we could choose a region. I'll do US East 1. We wanna make sure ACLs are disabled. And then also that block all public access is checked because we don't want any user out there in the world to directly access our S3 bucket. We wanna limit the traffic to only come from CloudFront. Then we could disable bucket versioning, use the default encryption, and just create our bucket. Now that it's created, let's go ahead and upload our video. I'm going to select this golfcourse.mp4 video and then hit upload. Now that that's done uploading, we can try to view the video in our browser. So let's copy this object URL, open up a new tab, and you'll see that we get this access denied error. And the reason for that is because we said that this object uh, cannot be accessed publicly. There's no read permission here, it's just a dash. In order for our users to view our video publicly, we need to set up our CDN. And before we set that up through CloudFront, I wanna go over what a CDN even is. So a CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. And that's really just a distributed network of servers that caches content close to end users. So what does that mean? Well, without a CDN, you would just have one origin server, in our case, that's S3, and this will be responsible for distributing all of the content to all of our users around the world. So the users in North America will be pretty close to it, but then users in Australia here will have to wait quite a bit of time for the content to travel across the world to them. So as you can see, that users that are not very close to our origin server are going to have to wait a long time for the video to load. And that's not going to be a very good user experience. If we set up a CDN, it will allow us to serve our content through a series of edge locations that are distributed around the world. And edge locations are basically just servers that AWS has across the world that cache or store our original file and then serve it to users that are closer to it. So for example, the users in Canada will use this edge location, but then users in South Africa will use the edge location closest to them. And that's going to greatly decrease our load times because now these users don't have to travel all the way to the North America to get our video content. They can just hit the edge location closest to them and receive it much faster. On top of that, it's going to save us a ton of money because the cost of transferring data from our origin server out into the world is a lot higher than the cost of transferring data from an edge location. Additionally, a CDN is going to help increase our server's availability and uptime because all the requests are distributed among these edge locations. If all of the requests were only being handled by one server, it could potentially overload the server and take it down. And lastly, a CDN helps prevent certain attacks like DDoS attacks because these edge locations will be able to figure out if certain requests are malicious or if a user is trying to attack our server and it will then block that request. So to summarize, here are the benefits of a CDN. It improves website load times, it reduces bandwidth costs, increases availability, and improves security. So let's go ahead and set up our CDN in CloudFront. We're going to go to CloudFront and then click Create Distribution. For the origin domain, we're going to select our S3 bucket, and this is going to be the source of our content, so where it's actually stored. Then for the origin access, we don't want it to be public because our bucket is private, so we'll select Origin Access Control Settings, and this is going to restrict access to our bucket so that we can only access it through CloudFront. And we're going to need to create a control setting, so we can go ahead and do that. We'll call it Video Streaming access. And then make sure sign request is checked and the origin type is S3. So once that, that is created, you'll see that we need to update our S3 bucket and we're going to do that right after we create this distribution. So we could scroll down and then we'll want to check redirect HTTP to HTTPS so that our connections are secure. 
And for the cache policy, we can just do caching optimized and that just sets some default caching behavior, but you're free to customize the caching behavior if you want. And for the web app firewall, I'm not gonna enable it for this tutorial, but in a production environment, you would wanna enable this. It just enhances security. For the edge locations, I'm just gonna do North America and Europe, but in production, you probably wanna use all the edge locations. And then we could leave the rest as is. And then let's create the distribution. Now that it's created, let's go ahead and copy the policy here and go update our bucket. So if we click that link, it should take us right to the permissions. And then we could hit edit. And the bucket policy will allow us to define certain permissions on objects within the bucket. So if we paste that in, we have the effect set to allow. And the principle is who we're going to allow access to. And in our case, it's a service called CloudFront. The action we want to allow them to do is called get object. And that's just going to allow CloudFront to read objects within our bucket. The resource defines which objects within our bucket we want to give them access to. So we have the bucket name and then slash star. And that basically means that we're giving access to every object within our bucket. And then lastly, we have a condition and we're checking if the AWS source ARN equals this CloudFront ARN. And this is the CloudFront distribution we just created. So we could go ahead and save changes. And now we should be able to go back to our CloudFront distribution and copy this distribution name. Paste that in our browser and then let's just grab the key for our video. And now we should be able to paste it in and see our video. And here it is. The last thing we need to do is hook up our front end to it. So I have created a basic React app with V. And if we open up the file, we just have this app.js. And right below it, we're going to add a video element. And then we're going to add some props to it. So we'll set the width equal to 800. The height will be 500. And then we'll add controls, loop, autoplay, and muted. And inside our video element, we're going to want a source element. And on that, we'll want a source attribute. And we're going to set that equal to our video URL here. And then we'll set the type to video slash mp4. So now if we hit save, we should see that in our app. And here it is. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. It would help me out a ton. Let me know in the comments if you have any feedback or what you guys want to see next. And I'll see you in the next one.